it's so great to be sitting here with you again after talking with you last year. Um, tell me what, tell me the story about the what if HC hashtag. It was something that started um, just one day when um, Michael Saeed had tweeted to me um, sort of a healthcare dream and people started replying to it and um, Michael actually suggested what if HC, what if healthcare as a way to start organizing these healthcare ideas that people were tweeting. And um, I kind of volunteered to be the uh, curator and um, started creating a Storify, started capturing these tweets. And I think it really captured people's imagination. People started tweeting all sorts of things, all sorts of aspects of health, tweeting about uh, their frustrations, tweeting about the solutions that they see, there are thousands of What If Healthcare tweets. I've tried to caption them all, um, but the way that I think about my role is that I'm the manager of a community garden. Um, so it's, it's not even my garden, but I'm just the one who's helping to organize everybody. And what sort of thoughts are these patients expressing? What have you been finding? Well, one of the things that I'd really like to do, which I'm hoping is, or is going to be explored on the panel, um, is the idea of what can we do beyond dreaming? And what can people do to take some action? And the themes that emerge, um, you know, there's a lot of themes around um, opening up access to data, opening up access to research. There's a lot of dreaming about um, what if we could get everyone to recognize um, wellness? It turns into something where um, you're limited. You're really limited with just 140 characters. So you have to express something so simply. And I think that turns out to be one of the really powerful aspects of it. Because you have to really boil it down. So it's almost like a line of poetry. And I imagine this hashtag is a way of bringing people together too. I mean, I can foresee if someone has a similar idea or thought, they can easily reach out to someone else who push, published a similar tweet. I hope so, and, and that's one of the reasons why I was excited about um, how far it was spreading, because it was getting into many different countries, many different communities, and um, I think there can be more introduction of people, and Twitter is one way. Um, you know, I always call Twitter the best conference hallway in the world. That, you know, if you can't get to a physical conference like MedEx, then you can get on Twitter and be part of a community and be part of a conversation. Like, what if healthcare? And I know last year we talked a little bit about the new data that was coming out about self-tracking. Has there been any developments on that in the past year? Yes, we're going to be coming out in October with special analysis looking at people who are living with chronic conditions. And we are segmenting the population um, so that we're, we're able to look at people with um, who report no chronic conditions, those who report one, and then those who report two or more. Um, when looking at the basics of tracking weight, diet, and exercise routine, there's really no difference between the three groups. But then when we look at um, tracking other health indicators or symptoms, we see that it really ramps up. Um, the more chronic conditions someone has, the more likely they are to track. So about six in 10 adults who are living with two or more chronic conditions say they're tracking health indicators or symptoms versus just two in 10 people who have no chronic conditions. Once somebody is online, if they have a chronic disease, they are more likely to be social around their health. Thank you so much for sitting down to speak with us for a few minutes today. Thank you.